Welcome to Glory Divine Network TV, with your host Apostle Ryan Suknanan. Let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired Word of God. To Holy Spirit, to direct us into this Holy of Holies, Father. We cry unto you, our Heavenly Father, that you let your presence fill this place. We commit to worship team into your hands. Use us mighty, O God. We commit the congregation into your hands, Father. As they have come here to intercede, to pray and to hear from you, O God. Let your will be done. And we commit the online viewers. Father, touch them and let their prayers be answered. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, I greet you all in the awesome, wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of our spiritual parents, Apostle Ryan and Lady Nisha, we'd love to welcome each and every one of you to Glory Vine World Ministries, a place to call home. And to our online viewers, we'd love to welcome you in the presence of the Lord. And we pray that you'll be blessed with the servants this morning. And we pray that every prayer that you have brought forth in the presence of the Lord, it shall be answered in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you give yourself a round of applause to be in the house of God? Hallelujah. I'd like to go for the brother Lucky who lead us in the first song. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Amen. Can somebody raise your hand and say, Jesus, Jesus. I'm proud to be your son and daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord.
Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings.
we please welcome in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the sweet and all-powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's an honor for me to be standing here today. And firstly, I want to thank God. I thank my mom and my dad. And I greet our online viewers in Jesus' name. My scripture reading is taken from Luke 10, 38 to 40. And it reads as follows. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to Jesus and she said, Jesus, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work all by myself? Tell her to help me. Today, Church of God, I've titled my message, Putting God First. Now, Mary and Martha were both women of God, and they both loved and they served God. But they were very different in their attitudes and the way in which they chose to serve God. Now, let's look at Martha. Martha invited Jesus into her home, but focused only on preparations and the work that had to go into serving Jesus. But Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him, meaning that she paid attention to everything that he said. Now, let's look at this a little bit more. Sitting at the feet of Jesus showed humility, and also she served Jesus, and she was surrendered unto him. Listening to him showed honor, and it showed respect. Just as the same reason that we come into the house of God week after week, because we honor and we respect God, the word, and the anointing about the set man of this house. Now, listening to the word of God is very important, church of God, because it's, uh, it's how us as children get direction in, God, in our lives. But we must never just listen to God. We need to believe as well. John 4 verse 46 speaks about a man who begged Jesus to heal his son at home. And this is what verse 50 said. The son was dying, so Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. And this is what the word of God says after that. The man took Jesus at his word and he departed, meaning he believed the word that Jesus spoke. And on his way home, his servants came to him and said, your son is healed. Why? Because he, was, he believed the word of God. So firstly, church of God, listen as Mary. Secondly, church of God, believe and have faith as this man. Thirdly, James 2.26 says, faith without works is dead. Once we believe, we must just obey, next obey and act upon the word because it is only when we act do we activate promise and the, the reward that comes with the command that follows with God. So in regards to our giving, when Malachi 3 verse 10 says, bring your tithes into the storehouse, when we act on that, then we unlock the blessing of good measure, of um, opening the windows of heaven that we cannot even contain the blessing that God has for us. And lastly, Church of God, Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it will come back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. But 2 Corinthians 9.7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. Now let's go back to Martha. Now the meal that Martha was preparing was her offering for, to Jesus. But Martha was angry, she was frustrated, she was irritated, and she even went so far as to complain to Jesus. This means that she never served with a cheerful heart. She never gave out a wholehearted devotion because she was looking at Mary and how she served God. And that is why Jesus said to her in verse 41, you are worried about too many things, but what Mary has chosen will not be taken away. In the same way, church of God, when we put God first by listening to him, by believing him, by obeying him and putting into action, but also doing it with a pleasing motive, whatever God blesses us with, no man can ever take away from us. So God bless you as you sow into his kingdom. Amen. Shall we all stand in the presence of the Lord? I'd like to ask our brother children to please pray for the time offering. Amen. Let's bow our heads. 
Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit is here, present right now. Father God, we activate the principles of giving and blessing, Lord Jesus. Father God, those that give, Lord, see them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that can't give, Father God, be our provider. Be Jehovah Jireh, Lord, in our lives, Lord Jesus. That as we give, your seal of anointing will be upon us and press down, shaking together and running over. You will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So those that are online, the banking details will be online so you can forward it. For those that are in attendance, can you please make your way forward as the offering baskets are here. Praise God. to welcome you in the presence of God on behalf of Apostle Ryan and First Lady Nisha and the First Family. Shall you please rise as we'd love to give you a welcome gift if you are here for the first time. Praise God. Amen. Our brother over here, can we welcome them? Our sister over there, can we welcome her? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Isn't it good? One more time. Isn't it good to be in the house of God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church of God, as you know, this is a time that uh, our apostle has also allowed us to give testimonies on the goodness and the, the generosity and the favor of God upon our lives. Who's going to be here for the first time? Or if you are here and you've got a testimony to share, we'd love to hear it. Who's going to come for the first, in the presence of the Lord? Amen. We'd love to welcome you. If you are here and you have a testimony, please make your way forward. Hallelujah. Anybody with a testimony? Praise God, because you don't want me to testify, I'm going to take long. Hallelujah. All right, then. I'll use this time to testify. Praise God. Amen. Amen. First of all, I'd like to thank Apostle Ryan and the First Lady for giving me this opportunity to testify. Um, I would say my testimony is similar to what the Apostle had. And, you know, I think in most occasions you find that that's very rare, where, you know, you've it's like you, you've come to a point where you feel, nah, no, I won't, I won't make it. There's no way I'll make it. Last week, uh, Friday, I think we before last Friday, uh, I went to work at night and uh, I had food from the previous day that I warmed up at work. And then what happened was I, warmed, I ate the food and everything. And then after an hour, two, I mean, two, three hours, and I started getting very nauseous and started getting dizzy, you know, and then. And for sensitive viewers, please excuse me, for those of you that are sensitive, then everything came out. And then uh, I, managed to, uh, after, I managed to stay there the whole night to do my work. I thought, no, I, I'll recover from it. So I went home. I struggled to drive myself home. I was seeing 
not double, I was seeing quadruple, but I, something just told me, stay in the middle, don't look everywhere else, just stay in the middle. I managed to drive myself home, on my way I phoned my wife, my wife was in such a panic, Yo. I drove, I managed to, I came home, I went and sleep, I thought, no, this will brush over, because, you know, normally when we, when we come, when we throw up and then what, what will happen, you just drink a little water, you'll be fine. The Saturday morning, I was powerless, I was never so drained in my entire life. My wife rushed me to the hospital. When I came there, my blood pressure was 205. And the, even the nurses and the doctors asked, how is this guy still alive? Because they said I was supposed to have something called cardiac arrest. I was supposed to have a heart attack and die and something like that. And they struggled for two days to bring my blood pressure down. Fortunately, within that time space, I knew and I was reminded about what Apostle was preaching here. He always reminds us whose report will you believe. He always reminds us that greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. And he said in, in, in Psalms 23, though I walk through, that means you, you will not be oblivious not to walk through. You will walk through. So I went and Apostle phoned me. Um, he phoned me and then he encouraged me and he prayed for me. All of a sudden, I started, for three days, church, I never ate. I was on the drug for three days. If you must see my arms, you'd swear I was on drugs. There was machines all over, all around me. And, you know, I just kept the faith. And, and I was listening to what the pastor was praying me. He told me, no, don't worry, you'll be fine. And that encouraged me. And then on the third day, I started eating. But they, you know, I started getting my strength. And then, then they said, no, I can't be here forever. I just want to thank the Apostle and the First Lady and the leadership, Brother Lucky and them and Shola Renola, everyone that was praying for me, the church, the leadership, thank you so much for praying for me. Uh, it just strengthened me in such a way that it reminded me that, you know, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for God is with us. And I believe that my faith was tested in that because I thought I was going to die. The nurses and the doctors couldn't believe that this guy is still alive. And I only thank God and the prayers of you guys that were praying for me. Thank you so much and may God bless you. Thank you, Apostle. Amen. Now, I'd like to hand over the meeting to our Apostle. We'll be doing a baby, baby dedication. Can we please welcome the Apostle? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Will the parents bring the child and come? Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is good when parents uh, acknowledge that every good gift comes from God. And the child in your hands is a gift from God. Amen. Glory to God. Come stand this side. Uh, you can stand here. Yeah. Proverbs 22 verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the ways of God. When they grow up, they don't depart from it. It's the responsibility of parents to build an environment in the home that the children will grow up and become godly. So the instruction, the discipline, the direction is given by parents. You look in the streets, you see so much of uh, violent crimes, you see murderers, rapists, you see thieves, you see a whole lot of people. And if you trace the route back to the home, you might see a broken home. Or you might see a home that had no sort of discipline and respect. So it all starts in your home. A community is built by the way you bring up a child in your home. In the mighty name of Jesus. So before I anoint the children and I dedicate the children, I always anoint the parents because they have to make the commitment. Amen. As parents, in the presence of the witnesses and God, do you make the commitment to bring this child, to bring this child in the ways of God? Amen. Say, so God help me. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I anoint your Son in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I anoint your daughter in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, strengthen them to keep this commitment. I anoint your daughter in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I anoint your Son in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anoint them, O God, to keep this commitment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I present Emma Everhoff into your hands. I cover her under your precious blood from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, O God. I dedicate her into your hands. Lord, from today, no harm, no danger, no evil, no sickness, O God, no disease, Lord, shall come to her in the mighty name of Jesus. You will protect her, you will provide for her, O God. Your anointing will be upon her, Father. We take her and we give her back unto you. We dedicate her unto you, O God. For your glory, in the mighty name of Jesus, I anoint her in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And this is a remembrance of your commitment. Akona. Okanao. Hallelujah. Amen. I dedicate Okanao into your hands. I cover her under your precious blood from the crown the soul in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray no harm, no danger, no sickness, no disease shall come, Father, in Jesus' name. And from today, this gift that you have given to your handmaiden and to your son, we take it and we dedicate it and we give it back unto you. The Lord, she will grow up, O God, to bring, bring you glory. I anoint her, God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, and this is your remembrance of your commitment. So let's, let's stand here. Come, let's stand here, and we can just take a photo together. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Shall all stand in the presence of the Lord. I believe that God loves worship. Amen. God longs for me and you to worship him. Amen. In Psalms 8, David says, when I consider the heavens, he says, the moon and the stars you've ordained. He says, what is man that you are mindful of him? No son of man that you think of him. He says, you have crowned him with honor and glory. Amen. So God crowned you and me with honor and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are special to our God. Tell, speak to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm special to my God. Say, neighbor, you are special to your God. Amen. And then the Bible also says that Time will come when worshippers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. And it says, now is the time. Now it is the time for us to worship God in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands as we open our mouth, as we lift the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God wants to hear you. Tell him that he is great. Amen. So this morning, even if you don't have many words to say, but you can open your hearts this morning and say, God, you are great. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is the great God. He's the King of Kings. Yeah. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Father, we glorify your name. We magnify your name, God. We bless your name, O oh Lord. Bow down and worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him, oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship, bow down and worship Him. 
lift your voice and worship him. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Bow down and worship him. Bow down and worship him. Lord, we bow down and worship. Bow down and worship Worship him, worship, oh, worship him. His name is Jesus, the King God. His name is Jesus, Jesus, the King God. Worship him, worship, oh, worship him. says in his presence there's fullness of joy hallelujah hallelujah you see when we lift him up then he comes down hallelujah so when you open your mouth unto God and say you are holy then he comes in and dwell in our presence hallelujah I believe God wants to move in our midst this morning hallelujah hallelujah somebody God wants to touch and meet your needs this morning hallelujah hallelujah so let's continue and worship him from the depth of our hearts. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. So come and bow, bow down. We bow down and worship Yahweh. down and worship Yahweh. Can I sing one more time? Say, we bow down and worship 
Thank you, my God. Come to your water. Jesus. Yahweh, we worship you. Hallelujah. lifted up to God in an acknowledgement of surrender Heavenly Father as your children are lifting up their hands as a sign of submission as a sign of surrender O God they are surrendering all their problems and burdens unto you their heartaches, their pain, their difficulty, their problems. Whatever oh God is robbing them of their sleep, their pain, their sickness, oh God, all they're surrendering unto you right now. Those that are online, oh God, they are trusting you because you're a supernatural God. And I pray this morning that you will direct us, that you will lead us, that you will guide us. That you will give us knowledge, wisdom and understanding to understand our situation and also to take the right steps, O oh God, to go in the right direction. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this morning. Guide us this morning. Empower us this morning. Anoint us this morning, O oh God. Lord, we cannot do it without you. We need another touch this morning. Lord, we need, O oh God, your fire this morning. We need your passion, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we need your provision. We need your glory, O oh God. And most of all, we need your power and strength. We commit ourselves this morning unto you. And we pray, O oh God, for a divine encounter. A divine acceleration this morning. Holy Spirit, have your own way. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. Let's give the leadership, the praise and worship team a hand. I greet all the online viewers. Amen. And I pray that God will bless you, that God will have a word for you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, before I just get into the word of God, what the Lord has laid in my heart. I just want to congratulate, will you just put that award, congratulate my wife, hallelujah. The Legacy of Leaders awarded, amen, for your faithfulness in the kingdom of God, hallelujah. The mighty name, I was in Durban in the Legacy of Leaders 14th year conference, and we're all pastors and leaders get together, and they felt that it's... Uh, appropriate to award her for her standing next to me for 30 years. Amen. So we're quite very well known in Durban. Amen. In the kingdom work. And I believe it's a great award in Jesus' name. I want to get into the word of God. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. We need to really pray for South Africa, uh, this load shedding is keeping a lot of people away from church, it's really affecting people. So, but you must, Muni Warini, if it's load shedding, don't do prayer shedding and church shedding. Hallelujah. You must come, even if your shirt is not iron, dress is not iron, you're coming to the house of God. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Those things don't keep me away. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, amen. I pray that God calls you. I pray that you hear a voice from God. I pray that you have an angelic visitation because these supernatural encounters, if it doesn't happen in our life, our life becomes mundane and we feel that God does not exist, that our prayers are not being answered. God still answers, God still talks, hallelujah, and God still manifests in the mighty name of Jesus. We find in the text that God appeared to Moses in a burning bush, hallelujah. God gave clear instruction to Moses that he wants him on an important assignment, hallelujah. Amen. He wanted him to lead his people out of bondage from Egypt. Moses was stagnant. He was unproductive for so long that he started to make excuses. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses gave excuses as to why he did not think that he was the right man for the job. And from this text, the Lord has been speaking to me. And I'm going to be talking to you on a title, No More Excuses. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, no more excuses. Excuses is a virus. Excuses is a disease. Excuses kills generation. Excuses kills destinies. Hallelujah. Excuses stops your dreams. Excuses makes you stagnant. Excuses makes you go no way in life. Excuses makes you to procrastinate in life. Hallelujah. And amount to nothing in life. So I pray this morning that you will catch what God is about to speak to you. And you will determine in your heart, determine in your mind that you are somebody that's going to throw excuses out of your life. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So a church, as a church, you and I are also called to daily showcase the power of God to deliver people out of bondage and out of the slavery of sin. Just like how God called Moses to deliver his children, you and I have an assignment of Matthew 28 to go out into the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Witness to those that are dying and perishing. That neighbor that doesn't know Jesus. The husband that doesn't know Jesus. The wife that doesn't know Jesus. The children that is dying and will go to hell that doesn't know Jesus. You and I have a calling from God. You might not listen to an audible voice. But the commission has been given to every one of you to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To be witnesses of Jesus Christ to a darkened world. Hallelujah. Because Jesus still saves. Jesus still delivers. Jesus still heals. And Jesus is still the Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So God has called you to witness to your boss. God has called you to witness to somebody that you don't talk to. Even called you to witness to your enemy. It's a mandate given by God to you and you will be accountable one day where God will stand and ask you, what did you do 
with my calling? What did you do with my commission that I have commissioned you because your neighbor died without receiving Christ? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout to your neighbor, no more excuses. Hallelujah. Amen. Excuses and excuses and excuses. Hallelujah. Even today, people will say, excuses, load shedding, I will not go to church. Hallelujah. Amen. So, excuses are the invented reason we create. Hallelujah. Amen. To defend a behavior. Hallelujah. Amen. We are behaving in a certain way. No, it is because of my father, because of my mother. I'm an alcoholic because of my father. Hallelujah. Amen. I am X, Y, Z because of the environment that I grew up. But we are not prepared to take responsibility. In the mighty name of Jesus. Excuses is to postpone taking an action. Excuses simply, hallelujah, means neglecting a responsibility. Hallelujah. It's an escape route to procrastination and to a road of destruction. Hallelujah. How many of you are making excuse? You don't want to study. How many of you are making excuse? Hallelujah. Amen. That I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Hallelujah. How many of you are making excuse? No, I better just sit at home and watch church online. Hallelujah. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. No more excuses. Mark 16. So excuses are mainly a means of placing the blame of an internal problem or an external condition. And the escape route is excuses because you don't want to deal with it, not realizing that is stagnating your life, hallelujah, and killing your dreams and killing your destiny. Excuses, excuses. Oh, my friends are jolling. My friends are having a party. No, I don't have to follow this route. Hallelujah. You'll fight with your wife. You'll have an argument. You'll do everything. Hallelujah. To justify yourself. Not realizing that it is just defending a behavior which you don't want to deal with. Yes, the church gets very quiet because it's hitting you somewhere. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a generation changer. You are a history maker. You, can, uh, you are a person to leave a legacy. You've got to leave an inheritance for your children's children. But if you are living a life of excuses, you will leave nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. And you're always blaming and blaming, not realizing. It's excuses. You're defending a behavior. Hallelujah. Mark 16 verse 15 the Bible says and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature this call and this command is to everybody none excluded it's not only for preachers hallelujah praise the Lord you don't need anybody to come and ordain you and lay hands on you and say you are an evangelist you are a witness everywhere hallelujah you're having a good time in your home but your neighbor is dying hallelujah amen you're supposed to give them the light because they're living in darkness hallelujah and you say no we don't want to go there xyz excuses in the mighty name of Jesus. First Peter 2 verse 9. First Peter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim, you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. To proclaim his praises. Hallelujah. Because you are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you're a child of God, you are in his marvelous light. Hallelujah. You have the praises on your lips to proclaim the goodness of God. You are a salt. Hallelujah. You are a light that lightens and brightens this darkened world. You have solution to pollution. You have answers to questions. You are called hallelujah to proclaim the good news of Jesus have we forgotten that 
Have we forgotten that? When last did you witness about Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. So, we are going to study the excuses of Moses and relate it to our life. The scripture, my text verse that I read, hallelujah, God is going to speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Exodus 3 verse 11. Exodus 3 verse 11. But Moses said to God, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Hallelujah. Moses, excuse number one. Hallelujah. Who am I? Who am I? How many of you think of yourself low? How many of you feel you have low esteem, low confidence, low morale, that you cannot take that step forward, hallelujah, and be what God has called you to be? You have that hesitancy inside of you because you have allowed yourself to go onto a route and you have experienced certain things in your life and you have resigned and you became comfortable in a comfort zone and when God calls you and the minister of God ministers unto you, you say, no, it's not for me. It's for my neighbor because I cannot do that. But the Bible says you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. It is time to rise. It is time now to know that God has called you and nothing is impossible. You got to arise. Tell your neighbor no more excuses. Moses was once a member of royalty in Egypt. Hallelujah. How many of you can think back and when you look at yourself, you were this some time ago, you were that some time ago, you have done some stuff, you have zeal, you had dreams, you had goals, but everything is shattered now because certain situations in your life has come and caused pain and wounds and you can't go past that wound and pain and you cannot see the goodness of God and you have shrugged and resigned and become comfortable to a no-go situation and I've come this morning with the power and the anointing of God to break and destroy that stagnant spirit and that procrastination spirit that you will rise and that you will achieve your goals and that you will achieve your dreams and once more you will be restored in Jesus name no more excuses no more excuses hallelujah amen so now Moses, he was a royalty, but now he's a fugitive running from the law. Hallelujah. Amen. For 40 years, he has been running away from the destiny, from destiny. There were two. There was an Egyptian and an a Israelite was fighting. And uh, he went to intervene and he killed the Egyptian. Amen. When he murdered that Egyptian, he had to run away into the wilderness. Hallelujah. He did the right thing in a wrong way. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can do a right thing in a wrong way. Amen. He was supposed to intervene. He was supposed to separate, but he killed the Egyptian. A right thing done in a wrong way will have a wrong consequence. Hallelujah. So your methodology can be wrong. Amen. Your aim can be right. Hallelujah. So I pray God gives you wisdom to do the right thing in the right way. Hallelujah. When to speak, when not to speak. Hallelujah. When to say yes and when to say no. When to go and when to stop. Hallelujah. When to open your mouth. Hallelujah. That God will give you wisdom so you can, you can charter your own self. Amen. Into success and prosperity. Because sometimes we become our worst enemy. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says it is not in self to find your own way. And how many of us justify our flesh? Because our flesh tells us that we still want 
X, Y, Z. And God says that X, Y, Z will lead you to destruction. It's a journey going no way. You will be 60 years and then you will regret. And the Holy Spirit tells you, my brother, my, my son, my daughter, it is time now to change. It is time now to stop making excuses. It is time now to redirect your life. But your flesh speaks to you because your flesh is attached to the world and the pull of the world and the enticement of the world and the lure of the world and the temptation of the world overpowers the spirit of God overpowers the voice of God and you justify yourself with excuses and you might even fight your own pastor you might even turn against your own pastor. You'll turn against your brothers, your sisters that are giving you good wisdom to justify yourself. Hallelujah. You will even leave a church to justify yourself. A deceived person will never know that that person is deceived unless the truth is knocked in. The Bible says the word of God is truth and the truth shall set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So here we see Moses is in a setback. Setback why? Because of decision and action which led to consequences. Hallelujah. So he's in a setback for 40 years. In the wilderness. Hallelujah. From royalty now he's just a low, low, low down ordinary shepherd. So sometime in our life, we are sitting in a place right now. Trace back the decisions and the actions that you made that has brought you thus far. But it's not too late. Can I pronounce that over your life? It's not too late to change. It's not too late to make new decisions. Hallelujah. God can restore the years that has been stolen. Because the Bible says the canker worm and the palmer worm that has eaten and destroyed. God can restore. In the mighty name of Jesus. So he's now a shepherd. He's now 80 years old. Old man. Hallelujah. So he must have looked at himself. A fugitive. A murderer who killed an Egyptian. And now he's fleeing away from the law. 40 years of wasted life. So he came to a conclusion by himself. And said that. Oh no, 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 no. When God called him, I am not the right man for the job. Hallelujah. There are people sitting with talents. There are people sitting with skills. Can be utilized for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But you are in a setback state, in a setback mentality. Hallelujah. And when the voice of God comes and speaks to you through the apostle and you say, no, it can never be me. Hallelujah. Because you are so relaxed in a state of going no way that you don't even want the word of God to kick you into destiny. And I pray that the word of God kicks you into destiny. There are business people sitting here. There are millionaires sitting here. Hallelujah. It is time to make decisions. It is time to rise up. It is time to stop making excuses. It is time to trust God on the supernatural. It is time to trust on the miracle. It is time to put your past behind and say, I'm moving forward with tenacity and faith and determination. Your future, your success is a decision away in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's look at God's response. When Moses started making excuses, his first excuse is, who am I? Who am I? Look at me, running away for 40 years. Look at me, I'm a murderer. Look at me, I'm just a shepherd boy. Look at me, hallelujah. Look at me, just look at me. Who am I? Who am I that you are calling me? How many of you seated here when God calls you, you ask, who am I? I cannot speak properly. Hallelujah. I got my own problems at home. I'm dealing with my own problems. If you say you're dealing with your own problems, you're leaving God aside. And if you leave God aside, hallelujah, your problem will become bigger because God is your problem solver. In the mighty 
name of Jesus. So when God looks at him, looks at Moses, hallelujah, and this is what God says. Exodus chapter 3 verse 12. Exodus chapter 3 verse 12. So God said, so he said, I will certainly be with you. Though you are making excuses, though you feel inadequate, though you feel inferior, though you feel useless, God says, I will be with you. Hallelujah. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. God gave me a, God gave him a promise. If God comes and tells me something like how he spoke to Moses and God calls me and say to me and I feel inadequate and when God says when you bring the people out of Egypt you will serve me on this mountain I will get so excited meaning that God has already pronounced that I will be victorious. No matter what I face, no matter what I go through, I will be victorious because I'm going to bring the people out and I'm going to come out and I'm going to serve on this mountain. It is a promise, hallelujah, that I will be victorious. I will lift up my hands and give God praise. And I today pronounce to you, God is the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. He's going to deliver you no matter what you are going through. It's temporary. It's seasonal hallelujah you gotta lift up your hands and praise God and say I'm coming out 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 in Jesus name it's temporary God has already pronounced victory pronounced deliverance upon you you may be going through a situation where you are in bondage with something maybe you are addicted to pornography maybe you are suffering with lust maybe you are going through a certain type of a disease maybe your mind is all corrupted maybe you are so low low in poverty maybe doors are being closed on you hallelujah if I hear a sound and a word like this I will get excited and I know that I am delivered already and I'm not going to ask God for deliverance what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a road of praise and accept my breakthrough some of you are asking and asking and asking change your asking to praise hallelujah that God has already answered 2024 2022 years ago he said it is finished your deliverance has been paid for in the mighty name of Jesus. So God responded immediately. God promised to be with Moses. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 8 verse 31. The Bible says. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Amen. You might look at your inferiority. You might look at yourself and say, I'm uneducated. You might look at yourself and say, oh, but there's nothing good that dwells in me. Yes, nothing good that dwells in the flesh. The Bible says it. Hallelujah. But my strength doesn't come from my flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. My victory doesn't come from me. I'm not a conqueror through me. I'm a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, turn your focus to Jesus. You're not going to, hallelujah, live up to man's standards. You will live up to God's standards. And if you live up to God's standards, it is God that will make it possible. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So are you using the same excuse today? Who am I? I'm satisfied with being a clerk. I'm satisfied with being a motor mechanic when God wants you to own a garage. I'm satisfied with allowing my flesh to dictate my destiny and to dictate my future. Hallelujah. You must hate your flesh. Sorry to use this word. Hallelujah. You might just hate it and say, just like how you hate sin, just like how you hate adultery, just like how you hate any other thing, hate your flesh because your flesh is not your friend. 
You got to take your flesh and crucify it because the Bible says your flesh is crucified with Jesus. Hallelujah. It's nailed to the cross daily. You got to say, oh, I'm going to live by the Spirit. I will be controlled by the Spirit. Hallelujah. I will not allow my flesh to take me into a pit every day and make me make decisions that I regret on a daily basis. You got to crucify. It is no longer I live, but Christ lives through me and Christ will strengthen me to give me victory over every situation I face but on a daily basis on a daily basis and once you can program yourself to live victoriously with the strength of God on a daily basis your life will start sailing in the mighty it might be a battle in the beginning but it's a good battle it's a battle that will shape your future tell no more excuses no more. Those that are online, no more excuses. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you think lowly of yourself because of your setback. Moses had a 40 year setback and he felt, no, I'm just a low shepherd boy. Hallelujah. And I prophesy over you, hallelujah, that you will rise up. I prophesy you, you're going to make it. I prophesy if your parents were poor, you shall not be poor. I prophesy certain generational sickness and bloodline sickness in your family, you shall not have it. The blood of Jesus will purify you and the blood of Jesus will cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and I prophesy you shall live long. I prophesy that you will leave a legacy. I prophesy you will leave an inheritance for your children's children. I prophesy you will own businesses. I prophesy you will own luxury houses and luxury cars. I prophesy you'll have an abundance and an overflow. I prophesy money shall flow to you. I prophesy destiny helpers shall come to you because Jesus Christ has set you free. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God is powerful. So there are many reasons why we make excuses. Fear of failure. How many of you are seated here? You have fear of failure. Hallelujah. Failure must never be taken. Hallelujah. Negatively. Failure is a step towards success. The person who created the light, the light bulb, failed a thousand times. And when he was asked a question, he said, no, it took him a thousand steps to create it. Hallelujah. Failure, amen, is something that happens which gives you knowledge and understanding that the next time you don't make the same mistake. You learn from your failure. Hallelujah. If you fail, doesn't make you a failure. It's not a personal thing. You are not a failure. Your identity is not a failure. Your identity is, hallelujah, in Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Called to do great works. Glory to God. Failure of embarrassment. Fear of embarrassment. Hallelujah. Amen. And you don't take that step forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you take a step forward. Hallelujah. I told you from this pulpit, I will provoke you to be better people. In the mighty name. I've been there. I know who I am. I was in the streets. I was homeless. And I know the word of God provoked me. In Jesus' name. And for 31 years... Over 30 years I'm preaching this gospel and the gospel has never lost its power. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is counting on you. When he looks at you, he says, you are my son. You are my daughter. I take glory from you. In the mud. But when he starts making excuses, he gives you answers just like Moses. Hallelujah. But it's you that needs to make the choice. Glory to God. Fear of embarrassment. Fear of success. Hallelujah. Some people are even fearful of success. If I become too successful, I might leave the church. If I've been too successful, I'll turn against God. Lord, keep me humble. So keep me poor. It's a doctrine from the pit of hell. Because God doesn't want you to be poor. 
He became poor so you can be rich. Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Fear of change. How many of you are fearful of change so you make excuses? Hallelujah. I like my corner. Hallelujah. I like to just be into company of Brother Lucky and Brother Dion. If, if Brother Joseph comes or Brother Cabello come to me, no, 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 I can't adapt to you because they talk about education. I'm just taking for, a, for, a, for an example. They talk about goals. They talk about career. They talk about, hey, this weekend we'll be doing something good, constructive. While Brother Lucky and Brother Dion, hallelujah, as hypothetically I'm talking, hey, they're talking about, hey, there's a lecker party going on there. Hallelujah. There's a something going on there. Hallelujah. Hey, beers are free. Hallelujah. So, fear of change. And suddenly you keep away and you start talking bad about Joseph and Cabello. Hallelujah. Hey, those guys, those guys keep away from them. Meanwhile, they are the one that knowing where they're going. And if you join them, they'll pull you together. And you'll stop making excuses. Hallelujah. I pray your, your, your association and your friends change. I pray destiny helpers will come your way. Hallelujah. And stop only talking Kasi language and Kasi things. And say, come, come on, come on. Let's go somewhere. I'll take you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to fear of uncertainty. I am comfortable. I can put food on the table. Do you hear somebody say, as long as I've got a roof on my head and food on the table, it's just, nah. <laughs> God is a God of increase. God is a God of abundance. God is a God of overflow. Everywhere that I read about our God is a God of overflow. Not just food on the table. What about your neighbor? What about other people? What about the church? What about his kingdom? He wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. Fear. Hallelujah. Amen. Of uncertainty. Fear of responsibility. And all these things, fear, makes you make excuses. You go out to the beautiful girl, you go out to the good man for two years. And now the lady asks you, come, 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 when is the wedding date? Fear of responsibility and fear of commitment. You will make so much of excuses. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm that, that. Oh, this, oh, that, oh, that. Excuses upon excuses. Hallelujah. Because fear of commitment, fear of responsibility. And some of you belaga. You run. And you start another relationship after two years. When it comes to commitment, responsibility, you run. You're messing people's life up. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that stops. I pray you take responsibility. I pray you man up. I pray you woman up. Hallelujah. Know that God has created you. Your future is in God's hands. Hallelujah. But your choices and decisions and God will back you up. No matter how uncertain. We're serving a certain God that has gone before you. He's behind you. Hallelujah. He will make straight paths for you. He will remove all the obstacles. You are in good hands. He will light up your world. Hallelujah. And he will light up your future. Not like load shedding like Eskom. Hallelujah. Fear of mix, making mistakes. Some of you are so picture perfect. Hallelujah. That you just want to be so perfect. That you don't want to even go and attempt something. Believing in yourself. Because I don't know certain things. I will make mistakes. Learn. Allow somebody to teach you. Be teachable. Hallelujah. Submit to authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be humble. Walk in humility. Tell your brother, sister, I, I don't know how to do it. It doesn't make you small. It makes you wiser. In the mighty name of Jesus. No excuses. Lack of confidence. 
lack of self-esteem because you have been wounded, you have been hurt before. Hallelujah. Amen. And because of that wound is not healed inside of you, you make excuses because somebody touched a soft spot, hallelujah, inside of you that you don't want to deal with. And I pray today every internal wounds, everything that you have that is causing you not to move forward, I pray that God heals it right now in Jesus' name. Today I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a lifestyle. I'm preaching a message that is applicable to you and that will build you up. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Second Corinthians, his upper class. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Tell your neighbor, you are not sufficient in yourself. Listen to this. Listen to this carefully. This is what the word of God says. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Hallelujah. Our strength is from God. Amen. Everything that we need is from God. It's not from ourselves. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant, not of the latter of the but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The letter is, is, is referring to your body, referring to your flesh. If you follow this flesh, if you allow the flesh to be the CEO of your life, hallelujah, amen, He's, this flesh will kill you. The Bible says the letter kills it. The flesh kills it. It will always pull you on a daily basis away from God. On a daily basis, it will pull you away from your destiny and the purpose of God. And if you listen to that flesh, and if you don't allow yourself to be in the house of God, that the word of God, hallelujah, which is a lamp unto your feet, lamp unto your lightens your path. If you don't allow the word of God, hallelujah, to strengthen and empower you and that seed to germinate in you, your flesh will direct you and you will fight with your mother, you'll fight with your father, you'll fight with your family, you'll fight with your boss, you'll fight with your pastor, you'll even fight with God and you'll follow your flesh towards a path of destruction. You will even go and get liberation movements uh, and, 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 and uh, civic movements uh, and this movement and that movement uh, and you will try, hallelujah, to justify your flesh uh, and to, to rebel against God and you will move with all these people to say, yeah, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this and you'll move with a whole gong of people protesting not realizing that your flesh is the CEO of your life leading you to destruction I pray God opens your mind God opens your mind hallelujah because the Bible says the truth will set you free in the mighty name of Jesus and it's so beautiful to be free Jesus has broken every change and every shackle 2,022 years ago so that you can have peace of mind, that you can know in an uncertain world you serve a certain God, your future is bright. Hallelujah. May the Lord open great doors for you. May the Lord open closed doors for you. May the Lord, hallelujah, bless you so much that the blessed will call you blessed. Why? Because the truth has set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. Acts 4 verse 13. Acts 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And received that they were uneducated. Listen to this. Leicester Moy. People are all watching Peter. Hallelujah. John. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, hallelujah, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Untrained, uneducated, people outside marveled. 
And I'm here to tell you, your boss will marvel at you. Your working colleagues will marvel at you. Even if you don't have the degree, you don't have the qualification, they'll marvel at you. Why? Because of the wisdom of God and the glory of God and the answers that you have and the solutions that you give. Hallelujah. God, I pray that that anointing comes upon you right now, that you will be lifted up, that you will arise from every situation. Bless you, my daughter. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless you. In the name of Jesus, you will arise that wherever you are placed, you will rise, you will shine, you will glitter. Hallelujah. You will be the center of somebody. People will come to advice by you. They will come because of the wisdom you carry. You might not have the certificate on the wall you might not have the degree on the wall but what you have is the glory of God is the anointing of God the wisdom of God the direction of God the leading of God and the Bible say wisdom will promote you and I went to the legacy of leaders four five hundred pastors full leaders practice packed hallelujah I just went to the legacy of leaders because my wife was getting an award. And they take me and my wife and put me right on the front seat. Right in the front row. Hallelujah. And, and there's so much of pastors, they are high senior level pastors with mega churches. It's only the glory of God. Hallelujah. Then they call me to open in prayer. I said, okay, if I open in prayer, it's fine. Now my job is done. Then I hear my name is called out again to come and give a speech. Three people were chosen to give speech out of so much of pastors. And I was one of them. Hallelujah. If you have the glory of God, wherever you go, you shall shine and you will rise up. May the glory of God be upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you and I are more than conquerors. So, if we are more than conquerors, excuse must be thrown out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have a responsibility... If you have a duty, if you're a steward, if you're a musician, if you are a worshiper, hallelujah. If you're a preacher, whatever you are, hospitality, if you are there parking cars, if you are a Sunday school teacher, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you need to be here at 7 o'clock, you got to be here at 7 o'clock, no excuses. God will empower you. God will empower you, hallelujah. Because the Bible says, if you are faithful in the least, God shall add much. And most of you guys, God is not adding the much because the least that he has given you, you are unfaithful. I pray that God will strengthen you this morning, that you will be faithful in the least that God has given you, the job that he has given you, the husband that he has given you, the wife that he has given you, the children that he has given you, the car that he has given you. Make get the best car, wash it every week. The shoes that he has given you, polish it. I don't like a person with unpolished shoes. <laughs> Five minutes it'll take you, polish your school, shoes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God is watching you. You want blessing and blessing. He says, look at your blessing. It's in your hand. It's small, but it's in your hand. Be faithful with it so I can pour out the much. I can pour out the much. Some people will say, I will only tithe when I get 10,000 rand salary. God is watching you when you're getting 500 rand. Bless you, sister. So I pray that this word open your minds. Hallelujah. Because you are stopping your own blessing. God is fair. He's non-partial. He blesses everybody alike. If you apply his principle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So if you don't stop making excuses, there will be a lack of responsibility. 
and growth. I'm closing with this. If you don't stop making excuses, there will be a lack of growth in your life, lack of maturity, and lack of responsibility. Hallelujah. Because you are bypassing it always, and you're now 40 years and 50 years. I remember somebody that when I go to Durban, should always say, hey, I want to join the gym. Bless you, sister. I want to join the gym. This year I'm joining, I'm definitely joining the gym. I go next year, I'm joining the gym. New Year's resolution. And I don't want to say, the guy is over 70 years, he's never joined the gym. <laughs> I had to do this. I had to do that. Oh, no, no. When I was going there, I had to do this. I came out sick from hospital, lost 10 kgs. Do you know in nine days I lost 10 kgs? Thank God I put 4 kg back on now. This last month, nine days in hospital, 10 kgs are lost. And I'm gaining my weight again now. I checked, I'm gaining 4 kgs. And while sick, three weeks ago, I joined the gym. And I'm going every day. The only day I said I won't go is a Tuesday, we fast. And weekends, I won't go. Weekends is church and family time. So four days a week, I will go. And train for about one and a half hour. You think it's easy to wake up in the morning, early morning, hey, I'm going gym. It's discipline, it's sacrifice. Sometimes you gotta say to this flesh, you bow down. And I don't take any energy drink. I don't take any shake or anything like that to shake. <laughs> I, I gym naturally. So this thin body is natural body. A lot of guys are filling themselves up with protein, muscle this, muscle that. Within two months, I'll be big, big muscle, but you're bugging your lungs, your livers, you're bugging your kidneys. So when you go there to the gym now, I, I run for 20 minutes on the treadmill. It's not easy. I can make an excuse and say, okay, let me do five minutes here and go some <laughs> easier stuff. Because your body talks to you. Your flesh talks to you every day. Whose voice is louder, Brother Andrew? Stand up, Brother Andrew. It's good to see you. May the Lord bless you. You've got to wake up in the morning and say, Oh, God's voice is going to be louder today. You're going to make a decision. God's voice is going to be louder today. And you'll see after two, three weeks, God's voice is louder today. The next week, God's voice is louder today. And suddenly you'll be just walking with God's voice. Come on, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. So if you don't stop making excuses, continuously you will live a life of regret. How many of you, don't lift up your hands. How many of you are living a life of regret? I could have done that. I would have done that. I might have done that. It's not too late. God called Moses at the age of 80. God called uh, Abraham to have a child at over 100 years. It's not too late. Stop blaming your ex. Is your ex cut him out? That's where it's supposed to be ex. He comes and messes your life every time. Don't allow him to mess your life. You got the best husband that has got his arms open and calling you into your future. The Bible says Jesus will become a husband to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you don't stop making excuses, you'll never reach your full potential. 
if you never stop making excuses hallelujah people will sidestep you and you will not be considered for promotion and position if you don't stop making excuses prosperity will run away from you will not come to you if you never make if you never stop making excuses poverty will love you will embrace you will become your friend if you never stop making excuses opportunities will pass you and go to your neighbor let's stand in the presence of god i prepared this message in durban while i was in durban i went with the legacy of leaders and god was started speaking with me and i just open up to the bible and the lord said to me the greatest destroyer of destiny and dreams the greatest destroyer of generations is excuses not the devil is not the devil is excuses everybody says the devil and the devil says it wasn't me it's your flesh it's your soul that is why the bible says renew your mind paul says renew your mind romans 12 verse 2 so you will not be molded conformed to the pattern of how the world operates but you will be transformed by what by the renewing of your mind which is the power of god the transformation power of the holy spirit let's lift up our hands in the presence of god I pray that this word spoke to you. Heavenly Father, I bring every person into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want to call you in the front. If you want the Lord to deliver you out of the pattern of excuses, procrastination, slackness, taking responsibility, being afraid of change living in regret living into the consequences of your past decisions if you want the lord to change you the power of god is here you speak to the lord say lord change me lord touch me lord renew my mind lord help me lord strengthen me that in the next 5 years i will make history in the next 5 years i will be a nation changer in the next 5 years everything that i shelved will be resurrected in my life in the next 5 years i'll be a top businessman and a businesswoman in the next 5 years i will be a great father a great mother I will be a legacy leaver. In the next 5 years, I will reach my goals. I will be a manager. I will be a business owner. In the next 5 years, hallelujah. Watch the space because I commit my life unto you. Lead me and guide me. Every morning, my God, I'm going to say to you, Lord, lead me. Lord, may I listen to your voice. Lord may I follow your guidance Lord give me wisdom knowledge and understanding Lord may I rise up and stand out wherever I go Lord let my enemies be scattered let every person that is backing against my progress be neutralized in the mighty name of Jesus Lord those who are digging a pit for me shall fall into their own pit oh God Lord I shall rise 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 I prophesy that over you that you you are going to make it uh, in the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I believe that the Lord has touched you. The Lord has spoken to you. You have made some new decisions in your life. You will never accept no for an answer. Everything in Christ is yes. you will rise up once again and make that step 
even it's a baby step even it's a baby step but continue moving forward you came thus far don't allow your flesh voice to be louder and pull you in a place of comfort contentment and compromise god is going to take you forward in jesus let's give the lord a hand glory to god church get ready for our divine impact conference on the 23rd to the 24th amen we have a powerful speaker reverend ichana hallelujah that is coming from kenya is a powerful powerful dynamic preacher and teacher the good thing about him is that he always deposit things in your heart that changes your life and then we have pastor wayne balakishtan is a revivalist we have him for one night and uh, he's going to come and revive your soul in the mighty name of jesus amen are you blessed amen do you believe you are called yes you are called every one of you are called in jesus name amen let's stand as we close let us meet you on tuesday seven o'clock amen for divine connection let's be here in the mighty name of jesus we've got a powerful word a powerful praise powerful worship let us come and feed our soul to keep us strong in the week in jesus name heavenly father i bring every person into your hands i pray the love of god the peace of god the grace of god the mercy of god the favor of god the forgiveness of god the protection of god the provision of god to be with us till we meet again in jesus name god richly bless you have a wonderful week in jesus name we invite you to become a partner in our global ministry which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world when you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection pin. Because when you sow in good soil, Indirectly, your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.